what I said here. Uh, sorry, got to go back one more. If you remember what I said here, that this this term here is typically negligible, right? Because W is just this relative velocity, and we're considering slow flows, see, you know, creeping flows. Okay. So let's do that. Let's ignore that term. So if we neglect the convective term, ah. then we have the momentum equation for the fluid solid structure is really just the momentum equation for the solid. And I'm going to go ahead and write u double dot here. So if we also neglect the convective term in the momentum and balance for the fluid, then what we have is this. And so with that, let's multiply this equation by Kij. So if we do that, we have, well, that, right, because by definition, Kijrj is equal to Wi. So we can see that Wi is just this first term. So we have an expression for Wi, we can plug that now into the third equation, right, the mass balance, right, notice this equation only has this gradient of Wi. So if I plug in Wi there and take the gradient, then I have, I've basically eliminated Wi from the equations. And my only two no unknowns are U and P. Okay. So with that, we have that
And so now we have this equation and this equation, and W has been eliminated. So now we just have the unknowns U and P. So this is the so-called UP formulation. And I think if you, if you look at these equations, they may be written a little bit different, but for steady state problems, you'll recover the kind of classical consolidation theory, right, that you probably saw as an undergraduate. So, you know, for steady state, the U double dot goes to zero. And of course, in, in the absence of body forces, that term, this third term would go to zero. And neglecting density changes, which are usually small in isothermal conditions, then the last term goes to zero. And then, you know, you're basically left with something that looks like That equals to zero in the first equation. Yeah. The oh, you're right. I just forgot to copy it down. You're talking about this term that's uh, rho dot, rho f. Uh, what's that? N. Ah, n, yeah. Over the bulk modulus of the solid, right? Yeah, it turns out this is actually the, it's, it's not the second to last term that's neglected should be neglected. But rather the last one. Because in an ISO, only in, you know, only when temperature has an effect, you're going to have appreciable density changes in this type of setting. So a lot of times we can, we can ignore that last term as well. And so it's really, this equation and this equation that we'll be solving computationally. And in fact, we'll, we'll even ignore that inertial term. So it'll be uh, completely equilibrium problems is what we'll consider. So dynamic problems are more important for like earthquake engineering and other things. We won't really worry too much about that in this course. I keep leaving out terms, guys, sorry. There's a So that's really all I had today. Um, I just wanted to make a, a comment or a clarification from the last lecture when we talked about the BO coefficient. Um, you know, I, I just want to be really clear. I, I had mentioned that for soils, you know, the, the BO coefficient is often on the order of one, but for rocks and concrete, it's on the order of maybe two thirds. Understand that I said on the order of, right? It also could be on the order of maybe a half. And so, you know, for highly permeable oil reservoirs, it's, it's probably uh, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, you know, and, you know, even one wouldn't be a bad approximation. But for rocks and concrete shales, then it's going to be lower than that. So I, there was a question, so I just wanted to be clear about that. All right.